many of you probably are still sleeping the dead chilling just wanted to do have a brief conversation with you all first uh, let me say sincere thank you and gratitude to all the brothers and sisters from Detroit who came out last night to support Dr. Umar Johnson. It was lovely. Uh, shout out to the Detroit Shrine of the Black Madonna. We didn't use the Detroit Shrine this year because we knew we were going to need more space. So we went with a church that could hold about 550 and it seems like that's not enough either. So we'll be looking for another venue when Dr. Umar Johnson returns to Detroit. Also, I will be back in Detroit January 19th and 20th. I will be back in Detroit January 19th and 20th. With the grace of God, we finally got the opportunity to access the public schools here in Detroit so we can do a walkthrough and see if any of these properties are in a condition that allows us to rehab one or several so it can be used for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy. So Detroit, I will be back. 19th and 20th of January, I'll walk into the schools here in Detroit and I'll probably get with the Detroit National Independent Black Parent Association President, Sister Julie, who did an excellent job hosting yesterday's event. And I give a shout out to Sister LaDonna, my other Detroit assistant, who came out to support and show love last night. And so we'll probably do a, a parent association meeting. That'll probably be good. For my historically black colleges and white colleges, Black History Month is coming up. Please don't wait to the last minute to get your request in. We will be starting Black History Month at Bowie State University in Bowie, Maryland. That will be stop number one on February the 1st. So my Baltimore, Northern Virginia, and DC people, go ahead and mark your calendars for February the 1st, 2017, Bowie State, Dr. Umar Johnson's kickoff for my annual Black History Month tour. So yes, I'll be back in Detroit. I will be back in Atlanta, likely, on Martin Luther King Day. So for those of you who didn't get a chance to get tickets to tomorrow's sold out event, I will be back on Dr. King Day in Atlanta. That is the plan. A lot has transpired over the past 72 hours. And a lot of it was the result of some comments I made in response to an attack that was made against me by one of our brothers. Although I had a right to respond and although I could have eloquently and articulately responded without vulgarity as I teach our young people I did not heed my own words, advice, and example. So I want to apologize to three groups of people for the way in which I conducted myself. I want to apologize to the elders in our community, not just the conscious community, but the whole black community. Do you understand me? Because Dr. Umar's work is above and beyond black consciousness. It is about black elevation universally. I want to especially apologize to our young people, our children, and our young adults. In fact, this video is largely about them because although I got thousands of texts and emails over the past 72 hours, 
none touched me more than those that came from the children. I have 14 year olds and 16 year olds and 18 year olds and 21 year olds and 24 year olds who had reached out and said, Doc, we love you, man. You can't do that no more. That's not a good example for us. That's what touched me. When that 14 year old texted me, that's what touched me. When that 21 year old sent me that email, that's what touched me. So I'm largely doing this for the children. And so I want to apologize to all the African children, not just in the United States, but around the world who love, respect, and adore Dr. Umar Johnson. I apologize, guys. And in 2017, we're turning over a new leaf and you won't see that again. I also want to apologize to my supporters, my supporters, people who support me, people who have donated to the fundraiser, and those who have not yet been able to do so, but do support me. Because a lot of you guys go out of your way to advocate and defend and take up for me. And I don't need to be giving you extra battles to fight. But I am so very thankful for you all who did stand up and fight those battles for me. Nothing does a heart better than to go on Facebook or Instagram and see a brother or sister who you haven't even met yet, and some you have, smacking some of these trolls up and dismissing some of these trolls and checking some of these trolls because it makes my job easier. In fact, personally, I believe to some extent I shouldn't even have to respond to hate. I think y'all should do it for me because of the work that I've done because of my record, because of how many children I've saved, parents I've helped, prisons I've served. I really feel that I shouldn't have to take it upon myself to defend. I really think the people should. So to the supporters, I want to thank you all. You're very special to me. And some of you defend me more than people in my own circle who don't defend me, who will say they support me and then I turn around and they hanging out with haters all on their page. You know, so I want to thank you guys for that. Now, there's one group I don't apologize to. There's one group I don't apologize to. And that's you trifling, filthy, drama addicted, hate filled, sensationalized content looking, troublemaking, rumor spreading, gossip exploding Negroes who sit around saying that those of us in the conscious community shouldn't conduct ourselves a certain way and Dr. Umar shouldn't have said this this way or that way and you're the first one sharing it. You're the first one copying it. You're the first one making memes about it. This would have never gotten big. I took the video down. It was only up long enough for the brother to see it, for my supporters to see it, and that's it. It was down the next morning. That means you Negroes ripped the video from Facebook and you ran with it. How hypocritical can you be? I admit my mistakes. I apologize. But how hypocritical can you be to say we shouldn't be doing this? This is counterproductive. This is not what black consciousness is supposed to be about. And your trifling self takes that video, share it, cut it up. Y'all done made 50 videos from one video. How in the hell do you make 50 videos from one video? All those memes... I didn't see my face on Hulk Hogan's body. I didn't see the brother's face on Ultimate Warrior. I didn't see Gilligan's Island, Little Island. I didn't see WWE, WWF. I didn't see. If it's so wrong, why are you trying to profit by it? Not financially. Not financially, but in terms of views. See, this is a big problem for black people. 
Social network is not a blessing for us because we don't use it to spread positivity. You don't use social network to spread positivity. You didn't make a meme supporting my fundraiser. You didn't make a meme supporting all the kids I keep out of special ed. You didn't make a meme spreading my book. You didn't make a meme for any of the good things that I do. You don't make a meme for my Tuesday morning call. In the black media, the black media, some of you shouldn't even exist. This is why I have a problem with black media. I didn't see so many different black media outlets. The Root.com that I once respected, but not no more. Okay? I don't know if Atlanta Black Star jumped over this, but, you know, a lot of times you black online magazines and newspapers. Y'all will take something negative like this and make it a front page story. Y'all will take something negative like this and make it a front page story. But you won't make the war against black boys a front page story. You don't make the ADHD crisis a front page story. You don't make the fact that they letting white homosexuals adopt homeless black kids by the thousands a front page story. You don't make my prison work a front page story. But you'll make a conversation between two men a front page story because it ain't about the truth. It ain't about black elevation. It ain't about black positive. It's about negative. The only thing worse than the conscious community, the only thing worse than the conscious community, the only thing worse than the black conscious community is the black media and the conscious paparazzi. The whole tep paparazzi is worse than the conscious community itself. The, the conscious paparazzi is ridiculous. Listen, I had 500 missed calls yesterday. 500 missed calls. I had 1,000 missed calls the day before yesterday. I had 500 text messages yesterday. 700 the day before. Y'all don't hit me up like that for the Black College and Consciousness Tour. Y'all don't hit me up like that for the Black College... College and consciousness. Y'all don't hit me up like that for donations. I don't get 500 texts for the address for the donations. I told y'all that I don't charge to speak at prison. Shout out to my brother up in New York at Rikers Island. We're going to do that Rikers Island. Maybe we can do it the day before Brooklyn because I have Brooklyn on Thursday, January the 12th, Brooklyn. So maybe we can do Rikers Island the day before Brooklyn or the day after Brooklyn. I'm not due in Durham until, Durham isn't until the 17th, but King Day in Atlanta is the 12th. Brooklyn, um, excuse me, not the 12th, the 16th. So we could probably do Rikers Island the morning after Brooklyn, and then I'll get back to Philly so I can fly to Atlanta. And then from Atlanta, I'm going to go to Durham. So Durham, I'll be flying into Durham the day of, most likely Durham, North Carolina. But you Negroes in the media, Y'all off the chain. It's no way in hell something this negative should have been spread like this. Out of respect for my work put in. Out of respect for the work I've put in and respect for the goals that I'm trying to, to attain. You should have said, listen, the brother didn't do this right. But because of his record, we're going to protect him. And we ain't going to spread this like wildfire. That's what y'all should have did. But you couldn't help it because social network has made attention the new addiction. I said social network has made attention the new addiction. One more time. Social network has made attention the new addiction. And you don't give a damn what you got to do to get attention. You will break your neck. I don't understand it. Maybe it's hard for me to understand it because I get a lot of attention. Maybe so for me, I don't value the need for attention because it comes automatically. But for you thirsty, socially starved, unfulfilled, emotional, still undeveloped ego who need outside. See, when you need constant validation and constant views, something ain't right with you. 
That's a mental that's a mental issue where you have to always be seen and, and validated by other people. That's an insecurity piece. Maybe your father didn't spend enough time with you. Maybe your mother didn't spend enough time. You didn't get the type of attention from your parents growing up. So you now you want to substitute it for the social network. The social network is now providing you with the psychological validation that you never got at home. I'm not saying I'm not taking responsibility. I'm taking responsibility for what I did. But now I need y'all to take responsibility for what you did. Because you did not have to spread that like that. I got African dignitaries texting me. Doc, what's going on? Caribbean dignitaries texting me. This stuff didn't win. I got politicians. Politicians across the United States. People I didn't even know followed my work. I'm not saying no names. Big name black politicians some bourgeois and some not some of them shouldn't even reached reaching out that's how deep this thing got in three days now listen to me listen to me y'all know i'm not a big stickler for people snatching my videos down posting them trying to get your youtube dollars i ain't got a problem with that because i believe i'm here to help everybody eat i'm here to help everybody eat so if i can help you Okay, my DVD guys, y'all sell my DVDs, y'all know I don't care. You feel me? I, that's never been an issue for me. That's how I became who I became. So I'm not going to stop my people on the street from eating. Do you feel me? But I do need y'all to be more responsible. I need y'all to be more responsible. There's a brother on YouTube named Blacker. I think y'all know who I'm talking about. His YouTube is B-L-A-K-K-E-R. He might be the one that does the 60,000 views videos. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? Blacker. Well, listen, I need y'all to send Blacker on YouTube a message. He's the main one that takes my Facebook videos and turns them into YouTube videos on his page. He got a lot of my videos. And guess what, my brother? I'm not going to stop you on that right now. But there's two things you're doing I don't like. Number one, when you post a video, you give it a title that is not representative of the heart of my message. It's not representative of the intention of that message. So I need you to stop misrepresenting my message. I need you to be more responsible. And this ain't just for blacker. This is for all of y'all. If you want to post my videos on YouTube, the title better be appropriate and responsible. The title better be appropriate and responsible. Okay? Well, I'm going to get it snatched down on copyright because it's still mine. So I'm just letting you use it. It's my intellectual material. You understand me? It's mine. But I will let you use it if you can be responsible. Give my titles appropriate labels. Number two, the picture that you use to represent me better be professional. I am a black professional. I am a doctor. Do you understand? There's enough pictures of me in nice dashikis. There's enough pictures of me with a calm face. There's enough pictures of me with a suit and tie on. You can choose dashiki. You could choose suit and tie. But you showing a picture of me making a certain expression tongue hanging out my mouth when I'm trying to articulate and using that as the picture, that's not representing me well. I'm going to get your page shut the hell down. I'm not playing that in 2017. Don't be using no misleading, ridiculous looking ass poses of me. That's number two. Okay? Number three, when you edit, do not take comments out of context. When you edit, do not take comments out of context and the fourth thing, don't be posting no negativity at all. Don't. So all of you, I'm telling you now, share the word. I'm about to go on the YouTube hunt. And anybody who got some negative title, ridiculous looking photo of me, or a clip that I feel does not represent what we need to be doing as a people. Anything negative on your YouTube with my content I'm getting the whole page shut. Now, Blacker, you got a lot of my stuff on your page, bro. You need to be changing some titles. You need to be changing some photos. And you need to be taking some videos down. All of you who got that video of me responding to the brother, take it down. I want it gone. I took it off my page in about 12 hours, if that long. I want it down. And y'all going to help me. Y'all going to go on YouTube and anybody you see spreading the video, the clip of the video, Twitter, 
tell them to take it down. Oh, I'm going to get it taken down and I'm going to get all my content taken down and I'm not messing with you anymore. Now, the other thing I need y'all to do for me, this is for my supporters, because I know 75% of the people watching are supporters and 25% of you are just trolls, trifling ass trolls, okay? Now, for my supporters... When you come across a real hater, not somebody who disagrees with Dr. Uma, because I believe people have a right to disagree with me. I don't have a problem with alternate opinions. I don't have a problem with different perspectives. I don't have a problem with competing theories and philosophies. I don't have a problem with that. Not everybody's going to be a revolutionary Pan-African nationalist. Not everybody's going to be unapologetically African. You understand me? Not everybody's going to be as supportive of black women as I am to the point where I'm not tolerating no brother with a non-African woman. That's all right. Not everyone is an unapologetically African alpha male. I understand that. So we're not talking about people who disagree. If you notice, I don't delete comments from my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook when you disagree. I only delete comments when you are disrespectful. I don't have a problem with you disagree. Doc, I don't think you should have did that. Cool. But I didn't heard that 5,000 times in three days. I don't need to hear it no more. I don't need to see another text message. Doc, you didn't need to do that. I've heard it a thousand times in three days. I don't need to hear it a thousand and one. Tomorrow is a new year. Midnight tonight, we go into a new cycle. A new 365. It's time for us to cleanse, prepare, refocus. We got work to do in 2017. Well, to be honest with you, you say I lost supporters. I'm going to tell you right now. Anyone who says that they no longer support me because I got tired of sitting down and allowing people to disrespect and insult me, and I blasted back. And although I didn't do it as respectfully as I should have, and although I said some things that were unbecoming of a man of my caliber, which I apologize for, which I apologize for. But if you say that I lost supporters over that, I lost supporters over a video response. How long I've been putting in work? How many lives have I saved? How many children have I rescued? How many suicides have I prevented? How many families have I kept together? And you say you're no longer a supporter? Guess what? You never were. You never were. You never were. If you team Papa, you still team Papa. You ain't, you ain't getting off team Papa because of a, coast, a couple of uh, profane words. You might check Papa. As many of my supporters have done, as many of the elders have done, but to say I'm done. But your ass ain't quit the Chinese store, though, did you? The Chinese store, you still at there buying them wings and that iced tea. You ain't quit the Chinese store. You still on their team. You ain't quit Team Walmart. You ain't quit Team Walmart. You see how much money y'all gave Team Walmart? You quit Team Papa, but you ain't quit Team Walmart. You ain't quit Team McDonald's. Y'all gave McDonald's $600 million this year. Black people gave McDonald's $600 million this year. You ain't quit Team McDonald's. Nike ain't put a dollar in the hood yet, but you ain't quit Team Air Jordan. You ain't quit Team Air Jordan. You ain't quit Team Korean hair store with that weaving perm, $9 billion a year. You ain't quit them. You ain't quit Team Mercedes Benz. You buy three times the Mercedes Benzes of white folk and you only have one third of the wealth. So you ain't quit team Walmart. You ain't quit team Chinese store. You ain't quit team Target. You ain't quit team Air Jordan. You ain't quit team Perm, but you're going to quit team Papa off of one hour. You never was. You never was. I ain't think about you. You never was. You never was. I ain't worried about that. I did learn from this experience because the experience we had two years ago, I thought that was unique because 
feminine energy was involved. So I thought that's why that went viral because feminine energy was involved. But this situation with my brother has shown me that that ain't had nothing to do with it. Anything that y'all can exploit for views, anything y'all can use to satisfy your addiction for attention, anything you can use to exploit your addiction for attention will be exploited. I understand. So I do know now I cannot react because y'all will run with that shit like crazy. Not the fundraiser, not the school. Not the tour, not saving black children, not helping black parents, not working with black prisoners for free. No, we don't want to run with that. That's not important. We don't want to see no black progress. We want to see nigga shit. That's what we want to see. You wonder why gangster rap so positive? Because you don't want nothing else. You want to know why the housewife shows are so positive? You don't want nothing else. Let's just keep it real. Negro said, Dr. Umar had a fake phone call. You big dummies. Do you not know when you on the phone talking, if a call drop, another one will come through? You don't know that? You don't know when you got a thousand people calling one man that as soon as a call drop, another one will come through? You don't know that? That you don't always know when a call drop, you'll be talking and a call drop, and the next thing you know, the phone ringing, and that's how you know the call didn't drop. Give me a break. Okay. Okay. Atlanta, I can't wait to see y'all, Atlanta. Atlanta, I can't wait to see y'all. Yesterday at the power lecture, I was saying, I don't know what I'm going to do if I have to choose between opening up the school in Detroit or Atlanta or Baltimore I can't make that decision if the Baltimore school fall through Atlanta school fall through Detroit and I got the chew I can't uh, I'm, I'm sending that to the priest I'm going to get a divination I'm going to see what the universe says do we open this school in Atlanta or do we open this school in Detroit because I'm not making that decision I'm not, I can't, that's too hard for me. I got too much love in Atlanta, too much love in Detroit, too much love in Baltimore and D.C. I ain't making that decision. I'm not going to have Baltimore mad. I ain't going to have Detroit mad. I ain't going to have Atlanta mad. Hopefully one school works. Hopefully it's just one school that works. That way I got to make no decision because I don't want to get into no Detroit, Atlanta. I can't win that one. That's, I, I'm not, I'm not choosing. Y'all heard me? Atlanta, Detroit, I'm not making no decision there. That's too hard of a, I can't do that. Y'all support me too much, both cities. I, I cannot, I cannot do that. Okay. Three places I can go and I don't even need to get a radio interview or a flyer. That's Atlanta, New York, and Detroit. I ain't making that, okay, decision. Now, let me say, I apologize to my parents. I accidentally forgot to do the Tuesday morning call on Tuesday from Baltimore. I'm sorry. I got caught up in Kwanzaa and skipped it. Maybe my subconscious didn't register it because the children are on break. But we will be back on Tuesday. We will be back Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. The phone number for those of you who want to call is 857-232-0158. 857-232-0158, 857-232-0158, and the access code is 870-864-POUND, 870-864-POUND. Yes, family, I want y'all to go on all them pages and tell everybody y'all had y'all three days of fun. Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. We need it gone. Take it down. That doesn't represent me or what we need to be doing. Take it down. Blacker, take it down. I got to shut your whole page down, family. All right. A lot of y'all making a lot of money with Dr. Umar videos on your page. And I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. All right. Let the brothers eat. Let the sisters eat. I'm all about the whole family eating. Speaking of the whole family eating, before I wrap this up, y'all know that I put out a call for the ancestors. Excuse me. The ancestors are here. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. I put out a call for the elders. 
I put out a call for the elders to host a meeting of the leading speakers in the conscious community. And it was taken out of context by some, misunderstood by others. So allow me to qualify and clarify when I said that the elders need to call a meeting. I was not implying that the meeting should be held so that elders can dictate or force any of us to work with any others of us. This was not about making brother number one work with brother number two if they have an issue. This was not about making brother number three work with brother number four if they have an issue. This was not about brother number five working with brother number six if they have an issue. This was not about sister number seven not working with sister number eight or sister number nine not working with sister number 10 because they have an issue. This was not about forcing you to work with people who you don't like. I would never force a man or woman to work with a person who they don't trust. This was a meeting so we could create some principles of solidarity, some principles of solidarity, some principles of solidarity. So even if there was a difference or discrepancy between two personalities, there could still be a degree of mutual respect, even if that mutual respect only manifests itself in the way of you simply not speaking negatively about another brother. It might simply be you not speaking negatively about another sister. It was not about forced collaboration. Did anybody hear me say anything about forced collaboration? Did anybody hear me say anything about forcing anyone to work with someone else that they do not like? I did not say that. Come together. Listen, in the mafia, any organized crime unit, the families might not like each other, but they come together and they meet the League of Nations, United Nations, the African Union. You always have countries who don't like each other, but they agree to disagree peacefully. They agree to disagree peacefully. Diplomacy. See, I'm a Pan-Africanist, so I think in the level of international relations, not petty emotions, but international relations. Diplomacy so we can have an atmosphere of peace. Because y'all don't need to be at somebody's event and you worrying about somebody else coming in there causing trouble. That's not cool. That's not cool. We take things out of context too much. People talk about some, yeah, he said he coming to Detroit and he gonna meet the brother outside his house. He went a straight up fight. I never said that. What y'all say that for? Somebody called Detroit police. They had the police coming to the church. Yo, Nobody said that. Chill. So this is what we're going to do. I haven't heard of any elders stepping up to heed Dr. Umar Johnson's call. And as I said in my video, if the elders don't step up to do it, Team Pan-African, my organization, the International Movement for the Independence and Protection of African People, will assume the vanguard. Not above any organization, but with the others. So this is what's going to go down. Marcus Garvey came to America in 1916. Marcus Garvey incorporated the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League in New York City, 1917. Tomorrow is 2017. It's almost been a hundred years this March since Marcus Garvey has brought the largest black organization of all time to New York City. So in honor of his excellency, the king of revolutionary Pan-African nationalism, Marcus Messiah Garvey, in Pan-Africanism itself, Dr. Umar Johnson will be hosting the first international black consciousness convention in new york city i repeat the first international black consciousness convention it's time for us to convene to come together collectively to consult 
collaborate and conspire revolution. We going to do in New York City in 2017 what Garvey did in New York City in 1917. Are you with me, black family? Are you with me, black family? A whole week, a whole week, a whole week of activities. We want Africa there. We want Africans in Asia there. I'll be in China in May. We want the Caribbean there, Central South America there, all 50 states there, Canada there, Black Europe there. Yes, it's been 100 years since Garvey showed up with the greatest of associations. So 100 years later, the prince of Pan-Africanism is about to replicate the king. Garvey had 25,000. I think we might beat that. We're not competing. We're elevating the program. We don't get better unless we improve generation by generation. I can't feel those shoes. Even though I know his feet wasn't as long as mine. I'm a size 12. Mr. Garvey might have been a 9 or 10. I can't feel them shoes. But I have to build upon the foundation. So Brooklyn, 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 Brooklyn. When I get to Brooklyn, in the name of Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad, on Thursday, January the 12th, if you live in New York City, because we're doing it in New York, Garvey style. But let me say this. I will consider Atlanta and Detroit as possible cities too. I really want to do the first one in New York, but I will explore Atlanta and Detroit as possible cities for the first international black consciousness convention of 2017. When I come to Brooklyn, if there's any brothers and sisters in Brooklyn who would like to be part of the organizing committee, the organizing committee, the organizing committee, I'm going to need some help, but I don't want opportunists. I don't want opportunists. I don't want haters. Okay? You have to be professional and confidential. Professional and confidential. Professional and confidential. I need sisters do work. So I need sisters. Brothers, we don't work as much. But I need a few brothers. But I need some sisters. Queens stand up. Brooklyn stand up. Harlem stand up. The Bronx stand up. Boogie Down stand up. Okay? But I, I want to be respectful, though. There's a chance that we might flip it to ATL or flip it to Detroit. But we're looking at New York right now. We're going to see what the prices is looking like. Mega Evers College. Maybe we can rent out the whole Mega Evers for the weekend. And then maybe we can put different events around the city. Put different events around the city. And then what I also want to do is I need to have a collaborative committee of the conscious leaders. I want to have a collaborative committee of the conscious leader. Somebody said they want me to put on a scully with the ball. Why are you, why, why you, why you saying that? You want me to put on a scully with the ball? And you ladies need to cut it out. I got like 100 texts talking about you look sexy with the scully with the ball. Cut it out. But anyway, on the collab, so we got the organizer committee. They the workers. But then I need a conscious collaborative committee. I need the Hebrews represented. I need my Moorish brothers represented. I need my Nawapian brothers represented. I need my Nation of Islam represented. I need my guys and earths represented. I need my black socialists represented. We need the integrationists represented. You understand? We, we, we need the Pan-Africanists represented. The Garveyites represented. We need to have a United Nations. A United Nations of black political conscious ideology. A United Nations of black political conscious ideology. We need to have that. We need to have that. Okay? Because I want the decisions being made by representatives of every ideological spectrum. It ain't about me. It's about we. It ain't about me. It's about we. You understand? So we, we, we need to have that. And then at the convention, we're going to have panels to discuss this. How do we deal with this ideological conflict? We want everybody at the table. All ideologies are welcome. All ide In my master's house, there are many mansions. In my master's house, there are many mansions. Everybody can sit at my table. The only way you cannot sit at that table is if you are a troublemaker. 
I don't want you if you're about negativity. But if you bring in positive vibrations, now this is what's going to have to happen. And this ain't for me to deal with. Every ideological nation, every conscious community nation has to choose who is going to represent it. I'm not getting into that. The Hebrews, Tazariot, maybe he's the brother. It ain't for me to say. The Hebrews got to work that out. The Moorish brothers, I don't know. Is it Taj, Tyreek? Is it Alim? Y'all got to work that out. Okay, but there must be a male and a female representing every ideological house for the first international black consciousness convention. My brothers and sisters from Africa texted me already. They said we did. They said, Doc, we coming from Nigeria. Doc, we coming from Ghana. Doc, we there. Jamaica in there. So we need a brother and a sister representing the Hebrews, a brother and a sister representing the nation, brother and the sisters representing the Wapians, brothers and the sisters representing the Pan-Africanists, brothers and the sisters representing the socialists. Okay? We trying to make this powerful. Now let, let me deal with that because I knew y'all was going to make something out of that. My light-skinned brothers and sisters, y'all know better. Y'all know better. Y'all know better than accuse me of practicing light skin supremacy or dark skin supremacy. What do I say at every lecture? Y'all know better. I've been preaching this for 20 years. I should even have to answer this. Y'all know better. What is the first color on this flag? What's the first color? The first color is red. You see? The first color is red. Okay? First color is red. Okay? This is the flag that the Garvey Pan-Africanist created in New York City, 1920, at the first international convention, okay? The first color is red. Why is the first color red? Why is black second? Why is red first? Okay? The reason red is first because it is the blood in your veins that makes you African. It's the blood in your veins that makes you African. It's the ancestral DNA swimming in your gene pool that makes you African. Do you understand me? The first significant Pan-Africanist in modern history, John Brown Russworm, was extremely fair-skinned. The first black man to say God was black, another Pan-Africanist, Bishop Henry McNeil Turner, was very fair-skinned. On paper, they might look white. I don't make distinctions on skin tone. Do you understand? Those comments was pointed at my brother and they never should have been made. You understand me? So that was not about y'all. I don't do light skin, dark skin. You know that. Why do I have to say my albino brothers and sisters, y'all know this. My biracial, y'all know this. Y'all know. Why are you even bringing that up? Dr. Ooh, that's it. Dr. Umar is a light skin supremacist. Come on. Black skin. Come on. I don't do that. Stop taking something and running with it. But my New York people, if you're interested in hosting that, if you're interested in hosting that, you'll be able to sign up for it. You can email me too. You can text me too. And then in Atlanta, we're going to talk about that in Atlanta tomorrow because we might got to put it in Atlanta. I want to do New York because that's where Garvey did it. But I will consider Atlanta because Atlanta is a black Mecca on the level of a New York City. So, and, and of course, Detroit, you know, would be a perfect place for something like that too. But we're gonna probably do them every year or every other year, but we're gonna do the first one in 2017. But I need some people who uh, definitely wanna work. Ain't nobody more black and less black. Ain't nobody more black or less black, okay? Ain't nobody more, we all Africans. What's wrong with y'all? Have y'all listened to the Dr. Umar doctrine over the past 20 years? Have you listened to it over the past seven or eight years? You should already know my answers to this because I preach it. I stand on it. I, come on. But that's what I wanted to do this video to let y'all know that the unity is coming. My brothers who represent the different conscious nations, Moors, Nawapians, if you want to represent your nation, and you have their permission. And I know it gets funny because I know amongst the Hebrews, we got different sects. Um, amongst the Pan-Africanists, you got different sects. Amongst uh, the Moors, you got different sects. So, you know, maybe a couple different sects will be represented. We could probably do something like that. But I don't want any nation dominating any other nation when we have the conversation. That's the key. So if we got to do different sets, you might say, well, you know, we, we kind of different from them. We're going to need. Okay. 
I don't see anything wrong with that. We want everybody to be represented. Okay. So brothers and sisters, I just want to say we got the new year coming up tonight before the clock strikes 12. Tonight before the clock strikes 12. Make sure you do your libations to the ancestors. Pray to God first. I repeat, pray to God first. I repeat, pray to God first and do your libations to the ancestors. Put your intentions out. Today is the day of intentions. Today is the day of intentions. This is the pregnancy. December 31st is the pregnancy that is going to birth the new year. December 31st is the last trimester. This is the final day of pregnancy, okay, that is going to birth the new year. So you need to put your intentions out now. Put your, what do you want to do financially for yourself? What do you want to do spiritually for yourself? What do you want to do educationally for yourself? What do you want to do occupation? What are your goals for your family, your relationships with your children, your ancestors, the community, your new organization? Put your intentions out. We want to impregnate the universe with our intentions until midnight tonight. Impregnate the universe with our intentions. Okay? That's what we want to do. So with that being said, black family, I'm going to bid you all peace. I'm a, okay, I got to, my ride is waiting. It's time to get to the airport. Atlanta, here I come. The prince is on his way. First power lecture since last year. So we got a lot to talk about. Ain't no more tickets. You can't be at the door trying to beat Dr. Umar up because you can't get in. Ain't no more tickets. Okay, but I will be back most likely for Dr. King Day. So if you can't get in tomorrow at the historic Shrine of the Black Madonna, you can come back on Martin Luther King Day at the Martin Luther King Center and hear the Prince of Pan-Africanism. All right? It's all love. I'm going into the new year with positive.